I am Primo Piggy. Thank you for listening to this BDSM podcast. Welcome to our new and improved slave training series. If we had a scale in front of us to measure our previous series against this one, our previous BDSM slave training, you'll find a greater emphasis on the mental aspects of slave training in our new series. There's a lot of new information we have available to us uh, in this update because we're always learning ourselves, and then when we learn something, we pass it along to you. Uh, first off, I'd like to say that I'm Primal Piggy. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy. It's a good way to connect with me. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook at a rather large Facebook page called Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape. You can find that at WCDT. BDSM. You can find all of our resources, including uh, the YouTube videos of us recording this podcast series on YouTube. You can find that link at BDSMunited.com. So training for submissives and slaves may feel spiritual at times, but ultimately it's science. The brain is one of the most complex and magnificent organs in the human body. Our brain gives us awareness of ourselves and of our environment, processing a constant stream of sensory data. It controls our muscle movements, the secretions of our glands, and even our breathing and internal temperature. Every creative thought, feeling, and plan is developed by our brain. That's why we definitely want to focus on the mind and the body. If you're going to take something up, learning a language or taking a podcast course such as this one, you'd probably like to know whether it's going to work. You definitely want to know why you're doing it, and you probably want to know what you might get out of it. Increasingly, we like those answers to come, if at all possible, in the form of some kind of data, and we definitely want evidence. So we'll try to provide as much of that as we can along the way. Now, while our podcast is somewhat new, we, we've been a reliable source of BDSM education since 2012, and we've served hundreds of thousands of adults along the way. So what is slave training? Well, first, it's for people of all genders, and it's inclusive of any type of MS relationship dynamic. And we teach it's also available to a limited degree within any type of DS or DDLG type of relationship dynamic as well. It's limited because DS power exchanges are limited power exchanges. It's not less than an MS. It's simply different. If you look in our podcast archives, you'll find more information about the differences, though we'll discuss some of them in this podcast series as well. You can look for uh, some of the podcasts about like power exchange and authority exchange relationships. Uh, so we're going to call it slave training. We're going to use MS terminology, and we may reference specific gendered relationships, such as a male master and a female slave, for example. Uh, but we're doing that as examples. If your relationship looks different, simply adjust what we teach to fit it within your dynamic, to fit it within the genders of what makes up your dynamic. Modification, it's good. We just don't ever want to teach people to redefine or disrespect our traditions. Our BDSM lifestyle has been around for a long time. We have a lot of traditions. We have a lot of words that have uh, definite meanings, like submissive means something and slave means something. And dominant and master, they, they, they have definitions uh, the traditional definitions for what those words are. So we don't want to re redefine any of those, and we definitely don't want to disrespect any of them. We want to be a, a worthy legacy of the foundations that have been set before us. Essentially, slave training means to adjust the slave's core attitudes and behaviors to be more in tune with the master's attitude and way of living. Think about the things you typically break in, things like shoes or your couch or your gloves or perhaps a hat. All of these you've flexed and bent to fit into your mold and hold its shape. 
whether this be your feet, your behind, or your head. Sla slaves pass a point where the major force of their resistance and self-defensive mechanisms, the shell, is broken, and they enter a state of pliancy and moldability for their owners. In some sense, the process of slave training is breaking a slave or breaking in a slave. That is the breakdown of someone's own will, their own attitude, and sometimes their own thought processes. Uh, it, it means a complete transformation. What generally results is a blank canvas upon which the master or mistress or dominant can apply behaviors attitudes, and reactions that would please them. Just to be risk-aware right from the beginning, it may have severe or harmful effects on the slave if it's done incorrectly or incompletely. Let me say that again uh, right from the beginning. It, it may have severe or harmful effects on the slave if slave training is done incorrectly or incompletely. So don't skip the process of vetting and negotiations leading up to a contract that's either verbal or formal. The process of slave training needs to be consensual and negotiated. Now, the type of mental training within BDSM has to do with the practice of changing the way the individual thinks, perceives, or behaves consciously and subconsciously based on the will of another for the pleasure of both the submissive and the dominant. Note that the aim of the training, the slave training, is for mutual pleasure. We often like to note that our motto RAC, which stands for being risk-aware, consensual kink, uh, it's definitely about being risk-aware and consensual. But that K... Uh, we like to say that it isn't kink if everyone isn't getting some type of pleasure from it. People who skip the training process will usually achieve similar results. Yep, you heard that right. People who skip slave training will usually achieve similar results. They do this through role play in the form of indoctrination. What this looks like, practically speaking, is the submissive takes on the role as a slave before they have the identity of a slave. They take on the role of a slave and enter into a 24-7 total power exchange relationship until the submissive can't tell reality from fantasy and they accept the identity that they are a slave. Now, while the end result may be similar, this can be problematic. The main reason is the submissive will often have to deal with a lot more trauma. Of course, slave training is traumatic in some way or another, but the process of skipping training is more traumatic along the way, both mentally and physically. Oftentimes, the um, master doesn't know what to expect or, or doesn't communicate uh, very well uh, what, to ex what his submissive should expect. And oftentimes the submissive doesn't know what they should expect. And so there's a lot more trauma involved in changing from a submissive into a slave if you skip a training process. It's like throwing someone off of a boat into the ocean in order to teach them how to swim. Uh, that's a lot more traumatic than swimming lessons. So that's our introduction to this new and improved slave training series. We won't waste your time with a lot of fluff. We'll get right to the meat of it, but hopefully we give you some bite-sized portions as we go. I'm Primal Piggy. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy. It's all one word. Also on Facebook at Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape at WCDT BDSM or on the web at BDSMUnited.com. If you're listening on your favorite platform, please give us a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up if you're listening on Pandora, write a review if it's iTunes. This allows you to connect with us, but it also allows other adults to, com to connect with BDSM educational resources such as this. It helps make our, when everyone is educated, helps make our community, our lifestyle a lot better. So thank you for playing your part in that. 
Uh, it's been a joy talking to you today, and I'll talk to you again soon.